Drifblim isn't the greatest or most popular Pokemon. Its base 150 HP is great bulk, but other than that its offenses are kinda lacking. However, Drifblim is the only Pokemon to get access to the ability Flare Boost, which when burned gives you a 1.5x boost to special attack. The Flame Orb held item activates the boost, and now we're hitting kinda hard. With Drifblim's bulk it can also use Strength Sap to drop the opponent's attack and heal, and if you're feeling extra crazy we can trick the Flame Orb to burn the opponents and steal their item. And with the Flare Boost, Stab Hex hits extremely hard, along with Thunderbolt for coverage, and in general, this is just a goofy strategy that can surprise some people and be pretty fun. Alright look, plain and simple, sometimes you just gotta go lighten balloons on fire. Flare Boost, Drift Blim is not the most popular strategy, but that is exactly what we're all about over here. If you're into that kind of thing as well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you don't, Drifloon will steal your firstborn child on a Friday morning. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so my opponent wearing the cool helmet is gonna lead off with the prehistoric ass Dawn fan. And I'm feeling like, hey, these tusks, they aren't even that great. I decide to toss out the pheasant dippity. And at this point, I probably should get out of here. I don't really have much business. I could potentially taunt, it's not really worth leaving myself vulnerable to an earthquake, so I'm just gonna go ahead and U-turn, and this is exactly why we like to go and touch stuff with the Fez. I can get that Toxic Chain, which not only gives it a poison, but it's also a Toxic Poison, so this guy is feeling a little bit sick, and at this point, either they're gonna go for, you know, the Stealth Rock or the Earthquake, so I'm actually pretty free to just go right into the Drift Blim here. It does, in fact, set up the Stealth Rock, which is nice because I can bring in Drift Blim before taking that Stealth Rock damage, but also it does give me that turn of buffer to allow uh, myself to activate that Flare Boost, or at least the Flame Orb, which is going to light my ass on fire, and now we are going to be hitting stuff pretty hard. Now, I do have a couple options. I could go for the Strength Sap and be passive, or I could just go all Offensive Balloon, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. I realize that, you know, with the Flare Boost activated, this thing is poisoned from the Toxic Chain, meaning if I can go for the Terra Ghost, get that extra stab, and then go for a Hex, this Don Fan, or at least old ass Don Fan, is not gonna have a good time. He called this guy not an only fan. Anyway, I go for the Hex, and uh, with the extra balloon on my head, that is gonna be a bad time on the receiving end. With that Flare Boost, it does have enough to take care of the Great Tusk, and that is a fantastic start. Drift Blim is out here boosting all over the place, and actually already grabs a kill on a very scary Pokemon. So. That definitely feels pretty good to get that thing out of the way early, and now on the free switch they decide to go into Deoxys defense. So initially I'm kind of just thinking that this thing does threaten me with like a Terra. Also it probably doesn't go down to just a singular hex without having uh, a status condition, and this is where I'm like okay I'm gonna see <laughs> if I can get some more balloon shenanigans going. I actually decide to go for the trick as they do not Terra, which is actually surprising. I'm gonna give them the flame orb and I'm gonna be like hey what do you got over there? Actually it turns out it's some leftovers, I just straight up steal your leftovers out of the fridge like that asshole co-worker and uh, they actually end up going for the knockoff because they do not want the leftovers taken and it ends up on the ground. So none of us get the leftovers which is hilarious but also what is even more funny is now the flame orb is going to activate on them and with the status condition I'm like hey I am still afraid of a Terra at this point but there's nothing stopping me from just going for the hex. I do decide to go for it uh, and with the burn here I don't care how defensive and thick your Noodle Deoxys is, it is actually going to go down. So, this is a classic example of uh, underestimating the balloon. And uh, we're actually able to grab a second kill there. Dead Zeppelin is absolutely on a tear. We do no longer have an item, uh, but I mean, that's fine. The Flame Orb wasn't doing anything for us, but as you could just run Will-O-Wisp, the, the thought of just running a trick and then getting a useful item in return is kind of just fun. So, at least now on the empty switch, they decide to go into the Dragapult. I do not have any business staying in against the Dragapult, of course it is faster, and a Shadow Ball is going to kill me. So, I just decided to switch back into Pheasantipity. I figured this thing has a great matchup here. Turns out they just go for the Dragon Darts, and I just come in for free, which is fantastic. And they also probably don't want to leave this thing in. They likely don't have any coverage, and I am quite the defensive bird over here. So, expecting a switch, I'm going to go for the Pivot with the U-Turn. Try to catch something switching and get myself a better matchup and all the momentum remains over here. So they actually end up switching into the Iron Moth. This thing is actually gonna activate that Quark Drive, and it also gives it the special attack boost. For some reason, I kind of thought it got speed at this point in the match. I just assume that it's always a booster energy speed, so I actually did not see that special attack, but I go for the U-turn, and at this point, I can just switch into whatever I like. 
And I figure the one thing this team needs that really helps it a lot is exactly what my boy Roberto has to offer. And that is going to be, you know, Sticky Web and also the Toxic Spikes, which does enable you know, Drift Blim's Hex. And as I go into this thing, I do break my Focus Sash with the... Uh, the stealth rock there, but they actually end up going for the substitute. Here's why it's important. If it didn't have a special attack boost, I feel like Ariados does take the fiery dance. Allows me to go for that sticky web, and at least I get the webs up, which is amazing. And now I'm like, okay, I definitely need to get rid of this substitute because an Iron Moth behind a sub is very scary. That thing is a threat. I can sucker punch that beanbag on out of here, and now they can just go for that fiery dance. Turns out with that special attack boost, yeah, that definitely is gonna take out the spider. And it actually ended up working out pretty nice for me because I was able to set up my sticky web, which is gonna enable a lot of my team to be able to win the, some speed wars. So, at this point now, I have an empty switch and I decide to go right into mana feed. You know, a iron moth with a special attack boost is quite scary. And one of the only things I can really have that takes this is gonna be the mana feed. So I go into this knowing that I am going to put that base 100 special defense to use and uh, hopefully be able to live an attack. They go for the energy ball, I barely hang on. That was extremely scary, does allow me to fire off a Surf, which is gonna knock out the Dorito Moth, and uh, that was kind of a crisis averted, because yeah, that energy ball was likely a roll, and uh, Booster Energy Moth is nothing to play with. So at least Manaphy does take care of that thing, except I'm very low with this. And the one thing that is going to come in and be scary is the Dragapult, because this thing is not affected by the Sticky Web with Clear Body, and uh, it's going to be just zooming out here. So obviously I don't have much that wants to switch into this. And they're just going to end up knocking me out with the U-turn. Which I'm kind of fine with. Manaphy did what it needed to do in taking out the Iron Moth. And we are still most definitely in it. The, uh, the Dragapult is still a very large threat. However, the one answer that I do want to try to conserve in the back is going to be my Choice Scarf Gardevoir. So... Uh, they decide now to go into the core of the night. Being killed by U-turn is great because I can see what they go into. Decide a matchup, and I'm like, okay, it's time. I'm gonna go back into the drift blim here, and I feel like this uh, this core of the night probably wants to go for a defog and get rid of those sticky webs. So I figure I can go for the T-bolt here. It's gonna be a nice little two-hit KO. Do a lot of damage with that boosted special attack, but not quite gonna be enough. However, they actually end up going for the Brave Bird, which does knock out the Drift Blim, which is uh, is unfortunate because with the Sticky Web up, this thing was going to be a threat later on. However, getting that chip on the Corviknight is actually very important for this team. Even with that recoil, it now puts it in a spot where uh, it's going to be easy to take care of with everything else. With the remaining Mons that I had, I really did not have anything that could damage the Corviknight, so I kind of needed to just go full Thunderbolt on his ass, and that was super nice. So, this is going to allow me to go right into the Gardevoir. It's kind of the only thing I really feel comfortable in. Uh, switching in here to go for that mystical fire to knock it out and uh, just basically ensure that this thing is no longer going to be a defensive asshole and also the sticky webs are going to stay sticking around. So that does take care of the core of the night and that is a huge threat out of the way and now I unfortunately am locked into the uh, mystical fire here so as they bring in the Dragapult, they do not know that I'm Choice Scarf at this point, and I am open to, you know, obviously a Ghost move here, so the best option I have is to switch back into the Pheasant Dippity. This thing is uh, bulky on both ends, and uh, I know that I can definitely at least take an attack from this thing, and then threaten it with the Moon Blast. So they actually end up going for the Phantom Force. Guy says, peace the hell out. I'm just going to go ahead and vanish for a second, and I am going to have to take at least an attack here, which does a whole bunch. Phantom Force... Uh, is gonna do some massive damage there. However, does allow me to go for that Moon Blast, and unfortunately for me, it does not activate the Toxic Chain. So that is kind of scary, as now at this point, I do need to just leave the Fez in. I definitely cannot really afford to switch this thing out. But again, when Condition is gonna likely be the Choice Scarf Guard in the back, and at least now that I've gotten a chip on this thing, a Moon Blast should be enough to take care of it. So Fez and Dippity makes the ultimate sacrifice and uh, is gonna go down here but a job well done because now this is going to leave the door open just to go right into Choice Scarf Gardevoir is one of the one of the more interesting mons to run. Now, I feel like nobody expects this thing to be Scarf and when it's just faster than it should be with its skinny legs, she'd be zooming. So I go ahead and trace the clear body because uh, now you can just see right through me and I can just go for that Moon Blast, be able to just hardly outspeed a Dragapult because this thing is quick as hell, but throw the moon at this thing's face twice and that's going to take care of it. So. Down goes the scariest Mon on the field, and now the final Mon is going to be the Feraligator. So, Feraligator is interesting here, because with the Sticky Web, I know that uh, Excadrill can definitely outspeed, and also, obviously, I outspeed being Scarf here. However, a Moon Blast is not quite going to be enough to take care of it, as I'm able to do some huge damage and actually very important chip, 
But they can just finish me off with the liquidation here, and that is exactly why the sticky web was so important, because on that turn they would have been open for a dragon dance, and a dragon dance would have likely sealed the match for him, but being at minus one speed already, it just was not worthwhile. So now I can just go into the Excadrill, give some bitches some headaches, and I guess heal the headaches with Excedrin, but I can outspeed, go for that earthquake. And that's going to take out the Feraligator and therefore finish off the game. So I thought that was just a super interesting match. Uh, definitely just kind of, uh, kind of a goofy one. But I had a lot of fun with it. And Driftblim got itself some action. So that's what we're all about. However, not quite enough action yet because I do have one more match for you. And at this point, if you've made it this far into the video, you might as well hit the like button. You have nothing to lose and it does help out the channel. So we got a match up here against some very interesting and also scary mons, so, uh, but I have a drift blend that lights itself on fire, so I'm not afraid. And let's go ahead and get into it. So this time my opponent is actually going to end up leading off with the singing alligator, and that thing is a little bit of a threat here as I just decide to toss out the area dose early. I'm going full spider mode because looking at their team, they don't have reliable kind of hazard control and getting the sticky web up is really going to be nice. So they just go right for the torch song and somehow it doesn't actually even knock me down to my focus sash because area dose is the absolute goat. I just go ahead and throw some webs out there and while the sticky webs are nice, this thing does really help out the team with the toxic spikes and I could get some chip with the sucker punch before going down however I do just have a switch right into Manaphy here so I decide to save the area dose thinking maybe I can bring this thing in at some point later try to get up some sticky web uh, or at least try to get some value out of it so I bring in the Manaphy uh, for essentially no downside I do take some chip here but again you know the Manaphy out here we look in tiny as shit but we are pretty thick and we do not care with our base 100s and everything so after some leftover recovery at this point, I can't really go for a tail glow because the thing is starting to boost with that uh, with that torch song. And I'm kind of afraid of this alligator at this point. And I'm just like, you know what? I should probably try to just get some easy damage here with the surf and uh, see if they want to commit a Terra. They do not Terra and the surf does not quite knock this thing out. It then allows them to go for the hex. And luckily without a status, I am able to take that nicely. And um, at this point, you know, Skeletor has taken so much damage and it's also relatively slow that it's probably not worth a switch out at this point. So I'm figuring, you know, this is actually pretty decent. I can just uh, trade a nice little Surf, go Kawabunga on their ass, and we can take care of the Skelly. So one more Surf is going to do it. Down goes the Skeledurge. I do have my Sticky Web up and we're feeling pretty good, but Manaphy is I was feeling a little, a little down in the dumps. But... Nothing a little apple can't fix. Leftovers is nice, and while we are still pretty fast, we can actually still use this to get some solid damage on whatever they want to bring in. Turns out they're actually going to go into the Ursaluna. Bringing in an Ursaluna here, big ass guy versus very little guy. And uh, also with the speed drop, this thing has like negative 12 speed. So I just decided to go for the Surf, thinking for sure they go for a Terra here. They do not. Uh, but luckily, this thing is quite bulky for them, and it is able to obviously live. Fire off a Blood Moon and just obliterate my ass to the Shadow Realm. So now I'm like, hey, this is actually kind of the exact spot that I would like to bring in the Eridos, knowing that I'm gonna be faster. This thing probably doesn't have any priority, barring like a Vacuum Wave, which doesn't seem as popular as it should be, but I can bring in the Eridos here, and I really wanna get up a layer of Toxic Spikes, at least. And uh, it turns out they do have the Vacuum Wave. However, the Spider is not going down that easy. I'm able to uh, just barely hang on, and that is because uh, you don't be using fighting moves against the old bug poison, but I honestly kind of thought that was going to kill regardless. However, I'm able to get up the toxic spikes, which is amazing, and uh, sadly I do go down to the vacuum wave. So, while the single layer of toxic spikes isn't going to do much chip damage, it's just going to be really good for potential hexes for the drift blim in the back, and that's kind of the, the main goal out here. Besides, of course, blowing up and acting like I don't know nobody. So, I now have a free switch, and I decide I'm going to go into the Excadrill. While I do know this thing does have the vacuum wave. It's going to do like 40%, I feel like, and uh, Excadrill is mostly fine. I could potentially set up the Stealth Rock. I instead decide to just go right for that Earthquake. It does knock out the Ursaluna, as uh, I would love to have gone into Drift Blim, but it just does not have anything to hit that thing. So we're able to take care of the Blood Moon, and that thing is a very scary mon out of the way. You know, it was also scary is Breloom, because while Breloom comes in here, it uh, obviously does get caught up in that sticky web, but this thing a lot of the time is going to be running Mach Punch. Uh, it also does get the poison, which this thing could be poison heal anyway. However, 
Um, I'm just going to stay in and go for this Delph Rock. I, I figure it's not really worth switching into Drift Blim here if they predict that and go for the Spore. So I decide to just make the safest option and just leave in Excadrill. It doesn't seem like it has a whole lot of utility in this match, uh, but it does just knock me out You know, with that Mach Punch. Not going to be Poison Heal, as the Poison is going to be doing some damage, which is always nice. But this bitch is always Technician anyway. So, at least at this point, I have a free option to switch into the Drift Blim. And with this thing poisoned, I'm feeling like, you know what? A Hex is going to be able to take care of it. And just to be sure, I'm going Terra Ghost once again. Danny Phantom on their ass. And Drift Blim is going to show why this thing is super nice. Especially with the utility of the Sticky Web and the Toxic Spikes. You really need some supporting cast for our little fella here. And uh, But if you do have it... I'm telling you, Drift Blim can be very fun. I don't even actually have my Flare Boost activated, which is why I need to commit the Terra at this point. That's why it's kind of nice to be able to hard switch in Drift Blim. I should have likely switched it in against that Mach Punch. But again, if I came in on a Spore before that Orb activated, I would be pissed. So at least even before the Flare Boost activates, uh, the Terra Boosted Hex is going to take care of the Breloom. And no more priority shenanigans or spores on their side. So, now they have a free switch. They decide to go into Chester Cheeto over here. And while this thing gets caught in a sticky web, of course, I am going to be faster. However, this thing resisting Hex is not ideal for me. But, one thing this Drift Limb does do well is literally just stay alive. And one way he does it is through the access to Strength Sap. I really feel like Strength Sap is such a slept on move. I can go for it and not only would it like heal me to full if I had any damage, but also gives them the minus one in attack here. So as they go for the Darkest Lariat, it's gonna do a whole bunch of damage, but at minus one, I barely hang on. And that is uh, pretty clutch. I really just don't have a lot that wants to switch into Incineroar. Uh, and I wanted to kind of see if I was gonna live that. And after the burn damage, I'm down to five HP. And I'm like, you know what? Well, I'm just gonna go for another Strength Sap, get some health back and likely be able to take an attack here. I just go ahead and sap him up. And while it was already minus one attack, if it wasn't, it would heal me back to full. But since it doesn't have max attack, um, they figure they should just switch out. They probably expected me to switch here. They go for the parting shot, which is great because now, uh, not only is Drift Blim at over half health, but also now they switch that thing out and something has to face the wrath of the on-fire Drift Blim. So, they now decide to go into the Greninja. And it gets caught in a sticky web, so I would be able to outspeed here, and I do have the coverage with the Thunderbolt. The problem is, my ass has been parting shotted, and we definitely need all the damage that we can get on this Drift Blim, which is why Flare Boost just barely makes it hit hard. But, um, I'm feeling like, you know what, I can still outspeed here with this thing under the Sticky Web. I can go for a T-Bolt regardless, and I'm gonna still hit pretty hard. However, this thing decides to just go for the priority uh, with the old Water Stars, and luckily, even with multiple hits, Drift Blim is like, hey, that doesn't hurt that bad. This is actually, this is kind of fine. It does, in fact, get the four hits, which is gonna allow me to fire off a Thunderbolt here, and sadly, with that parting shot, it's not quite gonna put this thing in range. I was thinking maybe it would put it in range to where the poison would take care of it, but we are just barely off. But, uh, as we take our Flame Warp damage once again, I am still alive, and I do not want to just go down to some priority here, so I can make a little switcheroo, as I decide to go right into the Phazendipity. Now, some of the remaining Pokemon on their team, including things like the Fluttermane, are definitely big threats. However, with Drift Blim having access to basically still a nice hard hit, I'm feeling like I can definitely get some value out of it. But as I bring in the Fez here, I take two hits nicely, and I know that the Poison He's just going to take care of the Greninja. So down goes another large threat. Not as scary with the uh, Sticky Web around as it kind of ha has to go for that priority. But at this point now, it leaves the door open to bring back in the free... <laughs> I hate this guy. Incineroar is super annoying. It comes in, takes the Sticky Web, but also obviously has Intimidate. Doesn't necessarily matter here. But it kind of does. Because I can just basically... I know that I can take an attack and I need some chip on the Incineroar. Kind of the most important thing for me is some Incineroar chip. I go for the Moonblast and it does not really do anything. And uh, the special attack drop obviously doesn't matter. Allows them to go for the Flare Blitz. Actually ends up getting the critical hit. You can tell I'm defensive invested just because I live that crit. Uh, but also the recoil paired with the poison is actually very nice for me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for the U-turn here. And I can bring in a little secret weapon. Because I was kind of unsure if that Moonblast was going to be able to take care of it. And the Fez is going to be useful for later. So, here I decide I can go into the Gardevoir. And why it's Intimidate is important. Because Matilda comes in and I'm like, hey, actually, I'm going to steal that from you. And now, look at me. I... I'm actually intimidating. I trace that intimidate, give him a minus one attack, and that is going to make this thing a whole lot easier to deal with, or at least allow me to take a Flare Blitz. Flare Blitz hits very hard still, 
However, Gardevoir is able to take one of them, and with the recoil and the poison, it is going to knock out the Incineroar, and that is why the Toxic Spikes have been extremely important. I mean, I would have been able to outspeed, but at this point now, they are down to one final Pokemon, which is, of course, of course, it's got to be the scariest damn Pokemon in the game. It is the Fluttermane. So, one thing that could be scary with the Fluttermane as it comes in, hits the Sticky Web, and gets that minus one speed, it would be like a booster energy speed boost. And that's going to bring it back to neutral, therefore allowing it to outspeed uh, things like my Drifblim, who I'm really trying to get to do some work here. So, it does get that Protosynthesis. Turns out it's going to be a special attack boost. And while now this thing has the power to, like, nuke literally everything... I'm feeling like, okay, at least I can outspeed with the Drift Blim. So, here's the plan. I can also outspeed with Gardevoir and get some chip here with the Moonblast. Uh, however, I decide to switch into the Pheasantipity just because I want to sack this thing off and it's going to open the door to uh, the, the late game here, or at least the end game. So, they go for that Shadow Ball. Of course, that is going to kill my 21 HP, have an ass. But what it also does do now is going to open the door for Drift Blim. Barely hang it on by a damn thread, by the way. I literally have... Like one more turn of uh, burn recoil, so I can bring in uh, the Drift Blim and see who the better ghost is today. Is it gonna be the random ass blimp or the greatest freaking ghost, also ghost fairy type? So I go for the hacks here, and they're actually gonna go ahead and commit the Terra. They haven't gone for the Terra yet, and at this point, I'm hoping it's not gonna be like something crazy. Turns out it's just gonna be pure fairy, which uh, does no longer make it weak to the hacks. But listen to me very closely. I am a Drift Blim who is set on fire, and for whatever reason, that makes me extremely strong. Especially if I have a Hex with the boosted damage because of that poison, and that is going to be able to actually pick up the KO there. Just barely, by the way. But it is going to knock out uh, the, the freaking crazy Misdreavus there, and that is going to be the end of the game. And uh, I was barely able to allow the Drift Blim to finally have some value with that little bit of HP. And I thought that was just a very fun game. And Flare Boost Drift Blim may not be super great, but it's fun to try to get it to work. And your boy loves a challenge. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.